Today we're going to be building the skeleton screen using Tailwind's new animation utilities. Let's get right into it. So you can see right now when I first load the app that the skeleton screens show and then the real tweets render when they come back from the server. Now I have this simple toggle state set up just to help me build these out so I can open the console, run toggle, and we can just freeze our app showing our skeleton screens here. And these are just some components I wrote. You can check out the code if you wanna see how I did it, but they're basically just gray divs with heights and widths. And then I render three of them out right here. So these skeletons look okay, but they're a little bit static and jarring because they just disappear when the real tweets come in. Uh, they'd look a lot better if we animated them. So we can use Tailwind's new animation utilities to do just that. If we come over and pop open tailwindcss.com and type in animation, We'll see that Tailwind comes with uh, four animations that they demonstrate right here. And one of these is Pulse, uh, which is basically exactly what we're building right now. It just makes the divs pulse a little bit. And we just use this by adding Animate Pulse to the outside of our skeleton. So if we come over to our first skeleton and add Animate Pulse, uh, we'll see that it starts pulsing. And we can do the same thing here and here. And so now if we were to reload our app, we see the skeletons pulse a little bit, which makes the loading screen a bit more inviting. But if we toggle our skeletons back on and take a look at them, I think the default pulse here is a little bit subtle. And in fact, over in the guides, if you scroll down to customization, the guides themselves say that the animations we include by default are best thought of as helpful examples, and you're encouraged to customize them to better suit your needs. So the animation utilities in Tailwind are not so much meant to be the building blocks of your app, rather just give you some conventional places to define your animations and keyframes, but encourage you to write your own uh, for your specific app. So let's come up and look at the default pulse animation, and we'll see that it uses the pulse keyframes which go from 100% opacity to 50%, and then it applies this pulse for two seconds using this curve infinitely. So I think we wanna make our pulse a little bit more dramatic. It's a little bit too subtle here. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is customize the keyframes to pulse from 100% all the way down to 0% instead of uh, just 50. So the way we do this is by opening up Tailwind Config, and we'll come down to our Extend section, and we can define a new keyframes key and a new key called pulse. So we'll say zero to 100% is opacity one, and 50% is opacity zero. We can see our tailwind is being rebuilt, but once it is, we can now see in our app that our pulsing goes all the way down to zero. Now this is showing me that uh, our in-between borders are fading here, and we actually don't want that. I think that's because the way divide y works, it's adding borders to these divs, but now we're pulsing these divs. So let's delete them from these divs, and we'll just add a new wrapper div with animate pulse. And I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, the next thing I wanna tweak is the duration here. We saw over in Tailwind that the default animation for pulse is two seconds long. Let's just go ahead and copy this. And we can actually customize this also in our extend section using the animation key. Now we're basically overriding the defaults here. And so of course you could name these other things, but for now we're just overriding the defaults. So I'll call this pulse and we'll paste in the default, but I'm just gonna change this to 1.5 seconds. And now we see uh, they're pulsing a little bit faster. All right, the last change I wanna make here is to actually stagger these. So they don't all fade in and out together, but they kind of have a delay one after the other. Now, you might think uh, we would want something like an animate pulse, animate pulse delay 100, and an animate pulse delay 200. And then over here we would have, you know, pulse 100 and so on. Uh, but this approach is not the best for this case because these aren't really meant to be global animations that we're gonna use all over our app. This is really just uh, animation for this particular page 
and uh, we just want to delay these particular dips. So instead, uh, I think the better approach is to just drop down to the style attribute and uh, use inline styles here to customize the animations beyond what the global ones provide. So we can just drop right here and set the animation delay for this second div. And let's just make this one 150 milliseconds. And then we'll make this third one here, animation delay of 300 milliseconds. And look at that, uh, we see our skeletons are now staggered. So that's looking pretty good. Now the last thing is if we do a fresh reload, we see that the skeletons all render together and then they start fading. So all three are rendered and then they start fading. I think it would look a little bit better if they started out at zero opacity. So I'm gonna come back to our keyframes and switch this uh, to be zero to one instead of one to zero. And that way they'll start off at zero. And now if we look at this, it looks a little funny, and that is because our second and third skeletons are delayed and they start off rendered by default. So to fix this, we can come here and use animation fill mode and set that to backwards. And that's a CSS property that says, if an element is delayed, we should use the end state of its animation for its initial values. So now if we take a look, We see that the skeletons look really nice. The app looks really nice because when it first loads, we just see you know a little bit of UI and then we have our skeletons just kind of subtly fade in and they, they basically go through about a cycle and a half while the network is waiting uh, for the real tweets. But I think we ended up with a really nice animation here. And so you can see just how nice these animation utilities are. They give us a good starting point. They give us a very easy spot uh, to come and customize our animations and keyframes, but then still uh, never feel like you can't drop down and do one-off things where it makes sense to do so. That's kind of uh, one of the reasons I love Tailwind so much is that it covers 95% of the use cases, but then for one-off kind of bespoke parts of your app, it still makes sense to use a lower level primitive sometimes. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, let me know if you did and uh, leave a comment with what you'd like to see next. I'd love to hear your ideas. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.